Hi guys, this is Amar and welcome to Network Engineer Stuff. So guys, in this video, we are going to focus on basic networking interview question and answers for Freshers Part 3. So in Part 1 and Part 2, I think we have seen till question number 15. Okay, so now let's let's move on to this question number 16. So this question number 16 says what is the difference between unicast broadcast and multicast so guys uh, many of you people who have done engineering may be aware of this uh, answer but but it's a very common question which is asked for fresher uh, so unicast is nothing but one to one communication okay so let's say there is a network okay, so let's say this is a network okay and we have few host Let's say this is our host. This is another host. This is another host. Let's say this is another host. Okay. So when it is one to one communication, that like is from, let's say this is A host, B, C, and D. So when it is one to one communication, that is when A communicates only with B. So this is one to one communication. So this is unicast. Broadcast is one to all communication. That is when A sends, if A is sending something to B, C, and D also. So it is sending to all. So it is one to all communication. That is broadcast. And multicast is when it is sending to a, a specific group. Let's say C and D belongs to a group. Okay. And uh, A is sending some some messages to this group that is which consists of that group consists of C and D so that is multicast okay. so unicast is one to one communication broadcast is one to all communication and multicast is one to many communication that is a, to a specific group of devices let's move to question number 17 what are the difference between static and dynamic IP addressing so when we say static IP if you remember guys on question number 12 we, uh, we discussed related to this DSCP okay. dynamic host configuration protocol so there, there I mentioned a diagram you know statically you know when we have cosine and IP address let's say to our Windows PC okay we have these two options if you if you have seen in your Windows PC if you go under this, uh, your uh, network connections, okay, under this you will have uh, whatever connections you have. Let's say I have a Wi-Fi. So if you if you go under this Wi-Fi properties, you will find a lot of options. Under this, we'll find an option for this IPv4, that is Internet Protocol version 4. We'll find this option. So under this, if you go into this properties of this IPv4, you will find this particular box okay where we have this option you know the two options to assign the ip address now the second option that is use the following ip address it is statically means you are statically manually configuring the ip address and if you are using dynamic ip address that is you are you are assigning this uh, ip address automatically by using dscp server and dscp protocol so uh Oh, so, so this is a difference. So in static IP, you manually configure the IP address, whereas in dynamic IP, the IP address is assigned dynamically or automatically by the DSCP server. Okay, and static remains the same all the time. DSCP, you know, this IP will uh, may may change every time. You know, every time you you request for DSCP IP or uh, DSCP server for this IP address, the IP address may be a different IP address, but in static, it will remain the same because you have manually configured on your machine so as question number 18 what is vlan and why it is used so vlan guys basically is virtual lan which logically divides a switch into multiple broadcast domain so um, you know if if you may be aware of this switch functionality okay let's say this is a switch we have uh, let's say multiple ports on this switch and there are some hosts connected on this switch let's say a B, uh, C, and D. 
okay now what is the behavior of switch like like whenever a switch receives any any message on its port it will make multiple copies of that message and it will it will forward to all other ports so let's say if a is sending some message what this switch will do is it will forward it to all other ports right and this would create an issue because let's say there is one more switch there is one more switch you know these are connected okay here also there are number of ports here also there is number of ports so this broadcast message you know will be sent to all other ports right so this will create something known as broadcast traffic okay and they will be in the same broadcast domain okay so this broadcast traffic can create a lot of issues performance related issues in your network okay so to avoid this so to avoid this broadcast traffic or to let's say you to basically control the broadcast domain we create vlans so the answer is that the vlans main purpose is to control the broadcast domain okay so how the vlan do this kind of controlling this broadcast domain is that it breaks the broadcast domain let's say what we'll do is that we'll put these two ports of the switch into one vlan let's say vlan 10 and the other two ports into another vlan let's say vlan 20 so whenever a is going to send some message it will be only forwarded to the ports which are in the same vlan not to all the ports okay so it will only forward to this particular port which is in vlan 20 that is it will it will uh, the port which is getting connected to host b so it basically helps in segmenting network and it improves security you know because the message is only going in the uh, in the in the same vlan the broadcast will remain within the same vlan so it also provides security and reduces of course the broadcast traffic so this is this is why vlans are used and you can very well answer in this in this uh, way Question number nineteen. What is a loopback address? Okay, so guys, this loopback address is nothing but this particular address. One twenty seven dot zero dot zero dot one. So this is a loopback address, and it is basically used to test the TCP IP stack on the local machine, like self test. You can see. so to test the tcp ip stack on the local machine this particular ip address is used it routes the data back to the same device without sending it to the network guys now question number 20 what is nat and where it is used so that is guys nothing but network address translation which translates the private ip address into public ip address private ip address into public ip address and vice versa okay so private ip addresses guys are those addresses which are used in lan and public ip addresses are nothing but which are used uh, on internet we can say so that those are public ip addresses okay so whenever you want to communicate within your lan you will use private ip address but when you wanted to communicate with uh, with uh, what you say a public network you will use public ip address public network is nothing but uh, i say internet so whenever you want to communicate with public network you use public ip address so let's say in this diagram what i've shown is this is our router okay this is switch and this are the pcs okay now when the pc want to communicate with each other they'll communicate with help of this ip address with this private ip address 10.1.1.100 and 10.1.1.200 but this particular pc if you wanted to connect to the internet okay it would need some public ip address okay so on this router we will configure something known as natting we will configure nat 
okay and this will it, it will translate this particular uh, uh, private ip address to some public ip address let's say it will translate to this 10.1.1.100 to some public ip let's say uh, 2031.1.5 okay this is a public ip address okay and uh, vice versa of course okay so this is the main purpose of of nat okay it is used in routers as i told you to allow again to allow multiple devices in the private network to access internet using single public ip address now let's say it now this particular router have only a single public ip address okay to communicate to the internet now let's say this pc also want to communicate so how will it distinguish is that it will use some port numbers okay it will have something known as a nat uh, table okay so it will it will maintain uh, such kind of information like uh, our uh, private ip and public ip okay so let's say 10.1.1.100 and we have one more private 10.1.1.200 so public ip we have is 203.1.1.5 because it have only one single ip so 10.1.5 so what it will use it will use some port number let's say 5123 for this it will use 5124 like this so it will use this particular format okay there is something known as nat table that is network address uh, address translation table and on the router you can find it so this basically helps uh, to communicate on public network so this is the purpose of having nat guys if you guys want me to make a dedicated video on nat i can make it's a very interesting topic there are a lot of types in that also uh, and and we can do we, we can make a video on that also if you want me to make a lab i can make it please do comment and let me know which, should i make a dedicated video on that but for now guys do remember that nat is something which is which has been used in routers and uh, it 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 allows uh, devices in the in the in the lan uh, which are having private ip address to communicate with the public network using public ip address so guys do remember this answer i stop here guys in this video i'll come up with more videos uh, on this particular topic of of interview questions for freshers i have been making this video dedicatedly only for my fresher friends because i don't want them to fail the interviews so guys uh, if you want this notes or any help from me you can write me on network engineer stuff dot uh, stuff at the gmail dot com you can also whatsapp me on this number double eight two eight double zero two six zero five i do reply on the messages so guys i'll stop here till then work hard subscribe to my channel network engineer stuff i'll catch up into next video till then best of luck thank you